Hello dear students, with this lesson we start very important topic. We are going to learn basic principles, rules for secure coding. During this course we are going to learn a lot of different use cases and real life examples to make your application more secure. Security is one of the most important things in our application. During my course Java from zero to first job, Together with all my students, we develop our own online store. And the most interesting part of this course is that we are going to learn secure coding on real examples, on real online store, web application that we developed with my students from scratch. This course will be extremely important for developers, QA engineers, security engineers, and even managers and users of web applications. And this is the first lesson of this course. We will learn some basic terms and concepts in order to be able to proceed with learning of more advanced concepts and understanding of code examples. We are going to learn what OWASP is. After that we are going to learn what OWASP top 10 is and I will explain you why it is important. During the lesson we are going to make an overview of categories from OWASP top 10 2021 and compare them with version from year 2017. Gradually, I will start explaining domain specific terminology. In this lesson I will explain you what common weakness enumeration is, what common vulnerabilities and exposures are, and what common vulnerability scoring system is. Let's start our lesson. Let's start from understanding of what our WASP is. OWASP stands for the Open Web Application Security Project. It is an international non-profit foundation that works to improve the security of software. The OWASP Foundation is a source of guidelines and recommendations for developers all over the world to secure the web. There are a lot of community-led open source software projects, hundreds of local chapters worldwide tens of thousands of members, and leading educational and training conferences. By the way, you can become an active member of this community if you wish. One of the OWASP's core principles is that all of their materials be freely available and easily accessible on their website, making it possible for anyone to improve their own web application security. The materials they offer include documentation, tools, videos, and forums. Probably one of the best known projects is the OWASP Top 10. That's basically what we are going to learn in this course. But instead of reading slides together with you, we'll keep improving security of our own web application that I did together with my students from scratch in Java from zero to first job course. Let's learn now what OWASP Top 10 is. OWASP Top 10 is publicly shared standard awareness document for developers of the 10 most critical web application security vulnerabilities, according to the foundation. OWASP understands that a security vulnerability is any weakness that enables a malevolent actor to cause harm and losses to an application stakeholders, owners, users, etc. The OWASP Top 10 list is developed by web application security experts worldwide and is updated every couple of years. It aims to educate companies and developers on how to minimize application security risks. OWASP compiles the list from the community surveys, contributed data about common vulnerabilities and exploits, and vulnerability databases. The latest update of the list was published in 2021, whereas the previous update was in 2017. Stay tuned, because I am going to keep this course up to date and update it with new lessons in case updated list of vulnerabilities will be published by OWASP. I believe that in few years new list will be published and there will be a need to create new lessons. What is also important to say about our WASP Top 10 is that it provides rankings and remediation guidance to fix vulnerabilities. Leveraging the extensive knowledge and experience of the OWASP's open community contributors, 
The report is based on a consensus among security experts from around the world. Risks are ranked according to the frequency of discovered security defects, the severity of the uncovered vulnerabilities, and the magnitude of their potential impacts. The purpose of the report is to offer developers and web application security professionals insight into the most prevalent security risks, so that they may implement the report's findings and recommendations into their own security practices, thereby minimizing the presence of known risks in their applications. As you already know from the introduction to this course, I have my own consulting company and I hold a lot of security, engineering and other audits of the software projects. And a lot of my clients can't understand why spending money on the detection and after that on the resolution of security vulnerabilities is so important. And you know what? They also make their point very well. Because you can live with security vulnerabilities relatively long period of time. Or short period of time, it depends. But it can be that you can live without even knowing about any vulnerabilities. But the potential impact from the security vulnerability may be dramatic and priceless. And all this is really hard to count. There is no single and valid statistics that would calculate probability of malicious attack and potential cost of impact. It is almost impossible to calculate because there are a lot of different cases that is hard to take into account for all possible web applications. That's why when we talk about security, it is always a question of the systematic approach, but not of one-time action. Systematic approach and series of regular actions directed on the identification, resolution of vulnerabilities, and creating of environment that will minimize impact on your application. That is, by the way, one of the direction of my consultancy services. I establish security processes in the companies on request. That's why this topic is extremely familiar to me and I will be able to share with you a lot of practical examples. Companies should adopt a WASP Top 10 document and start the process of ensuring that their web application minimizes these risks. Using the OWASP Top 10 is perhaps the most effective first step towards changing the software development culture within your organization into one that produces more secure code. It is recommended that all companies incorporate the report into their processes in order to minimize and or mitigate security risks. Integration of the top 10 into the software development life cycle demonstrates an organization's overall commitment to industry best practices for secure development. That's why OWASP Top 10 is so important. Let's review now OWASP Top 10 list. On this slide you can see top 10 vulnerabilities according to the OWASP Top 10 2021 and 2017. Let's briefly compare these two lists as we will go over. Broken Access Control This category moves up from the fifth position to the category with the most serious web application security risk in comparison to our WASP Top 10 2017. The contributed data indicates that on average, 3.81% of applications tested had one or more common weakness enumerations. With more than 318,000 occurrences of common weakness enumerations in this risk category, the 34 common weakness enumerations mapped to broken access control had more occurrences in applications than any other category. What is common weakness enumeration? Let's start learning domain specific terminology. Common weakness enumeration, CWE, is a universal online dictionary of weaknesses that have been found in computer software. The dictionary is maintained by the Meter Corporation and can be accessed free on a worldwide basis. The purpose of CWE is to facilitate the effective use of tools that can identify, find and resolve bugs, vulnerabilities and exposures before the programs are publicly distributed or sold. 
The Common Weakness Enumeration is a category system for hardware and software weaknesses and vulnerabilities. It is sustained by a community project with the goals of understanding flaws in software and hardware and creating automated tools that can be used to identify, fix and prevent those flaws. Let's learn two more terms that we are going to use during the course. Common vulnerabilities and exposures. CVE is a list of publicly disclosed information security vulnerabilities and exposures. CVE was launched in 1999 by the Mitra Corporation to identify and categorize vulnerabilities in software and firmware. CVE provides a free dictionary for organizations to improve their cybersecurity. But what is the difference between vulnerabilities and exposures? A vulnerability is a weakness that can be exploited in a cyber attack to gain unauthorized access or perform unauthorized actions on a computer system. Vulnerabilities can allow attackers to run code, access system memory, install different types of malware and steal, destroy or modify sensitive data. An exposure is a mistake that gives an attacker access to a system or network. Exposures can lead to data breaches, data leaks and personally identifiable information being sold on the dark web. The goal of CVE is to make it easier to share information about known vulnerabilities so that cybersecurity strategies can be updated with the latest security flaws and security issues. Common vulnerabilities and exposures does this by creating a standardized identifier for a given vulnerability or exposure. CVE identifiers, also called CVE names or CVE numbers, allow security professionals to access information about specific cyber threats across multiple information sources using the same common name. In fact, some of the biggest data breaches were caused by accidental exposures rather than sophisticated cyber attacks. There is also a common vulnerability scoring system. You should be familiar with this abbreviation too. Let me explain what it is. The common vulnerability scoring system, CVSS, is a set of open standards for assigning a number to a vulnerability to assess its severity. CVWS scores are used to assess the impact of a vulnerability. A CVWS score ranges from 0.0 to 10.0. The higher the number, the higher degree of security severity. Now let's get back to the OWASP top 10 review. Cryptographic failures shifts up one position to number 2, previously known as sensitive data exposure which was broad symptom rather than a root cause. The renewed name focuses on failures related to cryptography as it has been implicitly before. This category often leads to sensitive data exposure or system compromise. Injection slides down to the third position. 94% of the applications were tested for some form of injection with a max incidence rate of 19%, an average incidence rate of 3.37% and the 33 common weakness enumerations mapped into this category have the second most occurrences in the applications, with 274,000 occurrences. Cross-site scripting is now part of this category in the edition by 2021. And secure design is a new category for 2021 with a focus on risks related to design flaws. An insecure design can't be fixed by a perfect implementation as by definition. Needed security controls were never created to defend against specific attacks. Security misconfiguration moves up from number 6 in the previous edition. 90% of applications were tested for some form of misconfiguration with an average incidence rate of 4.5% and over 208,000 occurrences of common weakness enumerations mapped to this risk category. With more shifts into highly configurable software, 
it is not surprising to see this category move up. The former category for XML external entities is now a part of this risk category. Vulnerable and outdated components was previously titled using components with known vulnerabilities and is number 2 in the top 10 community survey but also had enough data to make the top 10 via data analysis. The category moves up from number 9 in 2017. Identification and authentication failures was previously broken authentication and is sliding down from the second position and now includes common weakness enumerations that are more related to identification failures. This category is still an integral part of the top 10, but the increased availability of standardized frameworks seems to be helping. Software and data integrity failures is a new category for 2021, focusing on making assumptions related to software updates, critical data, and CI-CD pipelines without verifying integrity. Insecure deserialization is now a part of this larger category. Security logging and monitoring failures was previously insufficient logging and monitoring and is added from the top 10 community survey moving up from number 10 previously. This category is expanded to include more types of failures, is challenging to test for. However, failures in this category can directly impact visibility and incident alerting. Server site request forgery is added from the top 10 community survey. The data shows a relatively low incidence rate with above average testing coverage along with above average ratings for exploit and impact potential. So, if we want to draw the line on the comparison of OWASP Top 10 2021 and 2017, then we can make the following conclusion. You can see that some of the categories were merged into one, like for example cross-site scripting is merged into the injection, XML external entities is merged into the security misconfiguration, Insecure deserialization was renamed to software and data integrity failures, other vulnerabilities have been assigned with different ranking, and things like that. We have just reviewed each of these items. Anyway, when we will review each of these categories in a separate lesson, I will share with you all the details and comparative analysis between OWASP Top 10 2017 and Top 10 2021. Because I have much more things to add. And this is just an overview lesson. I believe that it is enough for overview and we will learn more details in the following lessons. That's all what I wanted to share with you today in this video. Let's recap what we have learned in this lesson. Today we learned what a WASP is. Now you know what a WASP top 10 and why it is important. We reviewed categories from a WASP top 10 2021 and we compared them with categories from OWASP Top 10 2017. Also, we learned what common weakness enumeration is. I explained what common vulnerabilities and exposures are. And we learned what common vulnerability scoring system is. That's all for this lesson. Thanks a lot for your attention. Have a great day and see you in the next lesson.